where we need to go. That's a Marine talking. Admiral, congratulations. Your first novel co-authored with Elliot is at number 14 overall on Amazon, number one in political thrillers after three days. I've got my copy in my hand. We're going to talk at length about it on Monday, but I'm halfway through in one day. Are you surprised by how this is taking off? Um, I, I am not surprised. Um, I think it's a very good book. That's for others to decide, but it is very much a book of the moment, as you and I have been talking about the rise of China and the concerns we all ought to have. And it's set 15 years in the future. Um, and people ask me, why'd you do a novel? Why didn't you write a, you know, a tenth uh, nonfiction policy kind of book? And the short answer is what you just said. People will turn the pages. They'll tune in in a way that perhaps those uh, occasionally dry policy books don't always uh, don't always make happen. So I'm, I'm happy you've got it. Uh, we, we wrote this as a cautionary tale uh, of something we have to avoid. Now, Admiral, before I go back to Elliot, uh, there is, you're obviously an optimist in 2034 because the United States Navy has a semi-submersible boat deployed. So in 12 years, that's really going to be true? Well, it's a novel, so you never <laughs> know. Uh, but let's face it, um, 10 years ago, there was no such thing as an iPhone. Twitter didn't exist. So a lot of things can change in 15 years. And the Navy's moving out on stealth, on cyber, on semi-submersibles, unmanned submersibles. I think there's a pretty fair chance a lot of that will come to fruition. But here's the punchline, not just for us, also right. for China. Elliot Ackerman, I want to ask you about the Deputy National Security Advisor, who's a central character in this. I'm pronouncing it chowdery. Um, I know Matt Pottinger pretty well as the former national deputy national security advisor and O'Brien very well. Did you base this fella's worldview on Admiral Stavridis' worldview? Because it sounds a lot like it. Um, you know, we didn't base it on one individual's worldview, but he's very much a character. He is Indian American, and he is a man of two minds about both his optimism about the United States, but also about United States the United States' place in the world and the types of decisions it's making that in 2034 you know, lead it onto a course uh, with a pretty disastrous war in China. So, uh, yeah. so not one, we're not one person. I'm, I am working hard on outlining the interview for Monday, the long interview, because I don't want to give away anything. It would be like telling people how the hunt for Red October ended. But that's where the comparison is going to come, Elliot. Now, you're a successful novelist. Are you surprised that you're Number 14 overall and number one in political thrillers. I think, you know, listen, it's very nice, uh, you know, but when you're sitting there doing the work of writing a book and building out a book, that's not what's at the foremost of your mind. You know, you're trying to create characters who seem real and you're trying to create a story that's engaging for the readers, but also gets them thinking about some of the, of the larger themes. So, uh, but hey, it's great that the book's doing so well and I'm very pleased that people are engaging with it. Can, yeah, I, just the, make a, can I make a quick point about that? It's just that um, in all the books you've read in your life, think about them, all the novels in particular, it's the characters you remember. Think of the old man in the sea. You don't really remember the storyline exactly, but you sure remember that fisherman Santiago. And we tried to write a very character-driven book here. That's where it really differentiates, I think, from a Tom Clancy techno thriller. Yeah, although Mr. Clark... Uh, is a character I will never forget from the Tom Clancy thrillers, uh, mm -hmm. like uh, Red Storm Rising. Mr. Clark was always doing things. Let me talk to you, Admiral, about the People's Liberation Army Navy characters. Uh, they're very well drawn. They're very compelling. Uh, they come from different backgrounds and collide in different ways with their American counterparts. How, how confident do you feel that your Chinese readers, and they will be legion, will say those are fair and accurate representations of how they think, operate, and react? I think we've got a pretty good shot at this book doing uh, surprisingly well in China. This is not a good guys, bad guys kind of book. The, the villain here is war that both nations stumble into. And I think the characters are drawn from uh, senior Chinese naval officers that I've met. Um, the, the principal one, of course, uh, Admiral Lin Bao, is someone who just desperately wants to get back to sea. And he also wants to teach one day. I think we've driven these characters in very uh, human ways. And I'm hopeful the Chinese audiences will give the book a chance. I think they will. And Elliot, last question to you. Wedge. I know a guy named Wedge. It's not his call sign. It's just his golf name. 
but you start with a fourth generation fighter pilot. Uh, are there any fourth generation fighter pilot families out there? Um, there are probably not at this point, uh, just because of timing, but there are certainly third generation fighter pilots and the character wedge, his father, uh, was uh, drop in GBU 38 guided bombs in Iraq and Afghanistan. So I probably knew his dad. It is a terrific character as well. So everyone go, go order 2034. It's supposed to be in bookstores everywhere, but it's going to sell out. You better go to Amazon and get overnight delivery. And on Monday, I'll go along with Elliot Ackerman and James Stavridis. Thank you, Dwayne and Adam. Thank you, Ben.